Hello, all you cool gun guys and gun gals out there. I'm Oliver, and this is my Tavor 7. I just got this gun a few weeks ago, but I've had this one, my Tavor SAR 5.56, for years now. And I absolutely love it to bits. It's been utterly reliable and a really fun gun to shoot. And would absolutely be the first gun I would grab in the event of an emergency. It's the gun I keep handy if a crackhead were ever to try and break into my house or if the apocalypse comes and the dolphins decide to take up arms against humanity. Since I love my SAR, when I had the chance to pick up a higher caliber 7.62 bullpup, I didn't hesitate and chose the Tavor 7 over the other offerings on the market. I got mine online from a reputable East Coast gun store since no one near me carried them. Unfortunately, my particular example hasn't quite been the dream battle rifle I expected it to be. Now, before I elaborate further, I want to preface this with a couple of admissions. First, I make no claims that I'm a gun expert or some sort of high-speed, low-drag operator type. I'm just a regular guy like my rank tab says over here. My day job means I deal more with coronavirus than covered ops, and I just do the pew 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 thing for fun and stress relief. Second, as you can see, I'm not built like a rock. And unlike Ron Burgundy, I'm not about to hand out tickets to the gun show. Having said that, I've never had any issues manipulating my guns or any other, any other guns I've handled before. This is relevant because of the particular issue I'm having with my specific Tavor 7. Third, this video is in no way meant to throw shade on IWI or their products. Aside from my 5.56 Tavor, I've also had this Jericho 941 that I've also had for years, and it is a wonderful, wonderful gun. It's the handgun I shoot best with, and I have nothing but love for it. I know IWI makes great products, and in fact, I was planning on getting the polymer version of this baby, but I'm gonna see what happens with my Tavor 7 first. And I'm definitely not saying that all Tavor 7s have problems. I'm just saying my specific Tavor 7 seems to. So what's the issue or issues with my Tavor 7? Well, the main thing is that my gun has a very heavy charging handle. It is not easy at all to manipulate. Now, it's a 7.62. I expected it to be more stout than my 5.56 Tavor, but I've handled other 7.62 guns before and never had this much difficulty. It's been that way from new, and I thought maybe it just needed a bit of break in and a bit more lube, but I've taken it to the range now and tried three different kinds of CLP, and even though it shot fine, the charging handle still feels like I'm trying to shove a 2x4 through concrete. I did reach out to IWI by email, since their website said they weren't taking phone calls due to the COVID situation. And after waiting a few days for a response, the rep asked me a few questions, but ultimately concluded by, this, by saying the rifle is probably fine. Now, like I said, I'm no gun expert, so maybe I didn't explain myself very well. But while waiting for a reply, I started a thread on bullpupforum.com, and the people there seemed to agree that my 7 had some sort of issue. I was hoping the rep would offer to let me ship the rifle back for a vow for my peace of mind, but he didn't, so I posted on the Facebook Tavor owners group in frustration. Over there, they suggested I make a video to show them the issue. Stupid me. I wasn't sure what they meant by making a video, and this being the internet, I assumed they meant something dirtier. I was all ready to do that, but then the light bulb came on, and I realized the world probably wasn't ready for 10 minutes of me scrubbing toilets with a toothbrush. Just like that time back in ROTC when the Commandant made me do it after they caught me in an unauthorized threesome with an M1 Garand and an M16. Having said that, by the way, Mark, if you're watching this video, I know it's you that snitched on me, and someday I will get even with you. Okay, so getting to the gun. For a bit of comparison, let me insert this snippet from InRange TV, where they tried out the Tavor 7. 
so we're trying out the new 308 Tavor. Apparently you can lock it back like HK style here or not. I'm going to go ahead and lock it back HK style. Oh yeah, that is easy. Easy like Sunday morning. Easy like that charging handle has been dipped in Teflon, bacon grease, and 50 different kinds of adult personal lubricant. I wish my charging handle were like that. Also for comparison, let me show how, how I can manipulate some of my other guns so you can see that despite my weedy arms, I have no issues with them. Here's the SAR. These are snap caps inside, by the way, not real ammo. Okay, no problem there. That was easy enough. Several people Several people commented online that their 7s had no more effort than an AR to charge. So here's an AR. Okay, no problems there either. Okay. But hey, you're probably saying the Tavor 7 is a 762. So here's a 762. Here's an M1A Scout. Yep, that that wasn't too difficult at all. How about an AK? Up to safety, rack the charging handle. Yep, no issues there either. That is smooth, despite being an AK. And just for shits and giggles, let's break out my FN FS2000. Okay. It doesn't really add much to the comparison, but I think it's just a really cool gun. This is one thing, by the way, I wish my Tavor 7 had a folding charging handle. So it sits flush, but you can get a better grip on it under duress. As it is, the charging handle on the Tavor 7 is kind of dinky. It, oh yeah. Watch out, you covenant bastards. I'm about to go all Master Chief on you. Now, lastly, here we have my real B1 Plus staple gun. Yup, feel that smooth action. That is money right there. Now, Here's the Tavor 7. I am not exaggerating this in any way. That really is how heavy the charging handle is on my gun. It feels like you move it a little bit and then it gets stuck on something and then it takes a supreme effort to get it to go home. As I said, I'm no gun expert, but this sure doesn't feel normal. Now, I've taken firearms courses before, even took my Tavor SAR to a carbine course. And one thing you get drilled on is malfunction clearance. You know, the old immediate action drill. Well, on my AR or SAR, that's all quite doable. Okay, tap, rack the charging handle, and you're good to go, okay? On the seven, it's kind of hard to do that when you can barely move the charging handle. This isn't the only issue I've noticed though. With this assembly, 
it's very hard to get the bolt carrier out. If you follow the procedure in the manual, it says you should safety check the gun and dry fire it prior to primary disassembly. Okay, well if you do that on my gun, you open it up, and the bolt carrier is stuck and needs a lot of pulling to get out because it's snagging on the hammer. If I do the same with the SAR, it pulls out without much fuss. Now, I can avoid this issue by not following the manual's procedure and not dry firing the gun and letting the hammer stay cocked. But my logic is, if IWI meant for you to do it that way, why is it so hard on my particular Tabor 7? So, ultimately, IWI did offer to take my gun back for eval. I really, really want to love this gun, so I hope it comes back to me fully functional. Hopefully it's an easy fix, but hopefully it's not something stupid me just missed, like using the right kind of adult lubricant on it. Thanks for watching, and I'll update with the outcome later on.